very, it's very nice to, uh, to be here. And um, Mike and Theo have just been telling me about the, the program, the doctoral program in engineering that many of you are on. And it sounds extremely exciting. And it's great to see a, a center for systems uh, established at, uh, at Bristol. Particularly exciting that you've not called it a center for complexity, which is the more fashionable term these days. Perhaps more of that later. Uh, as, as Mike says, I'm, I'm stepping down as dean in six weeks, so I'm, I'm going to have to get back into this lecturing lark by the look of it. Um, so you'll forgive me if I'm a bit rusty. And if anybody wants to do a, a peer review of teaching, the kind of thing that we're obliged to do these days, please feel feel free to uh, feel free to do that. Um, I'll talk for about 35, 40 minutes on my version of systems thinking, and then perhaps we can have questions and uh, uh, a discussion uh, about what it is that I've, what I've said. Um, let me start by saying that, uh, as I say, it's a centre for systems here at Bristol, and, and that's, that, that's great, because I think it's a wonderful time to be, uh, to be studying systems thinking. It's the most exciting time I remember uh, in my career to be engaged with, with systems uh, ideas. At Hull, we recently did a survey with uh, KPMG on the inroads that systems thinking was making into the public sector, and it was really quite uh, significant uh, with um, the local authorities and the police force and the National Health Service. Systems ideas really finding a, a place in all these different uh, areas, particularly in the guise of something called lean systems, which I'll also say a, a few more things about. And there's a guideline to police services recently telling them they all must use a systems approach in, in, managing, uh, in managing the jobs that they, they, they do. Of course, a lot of this is associated with, with cuts and with getting more or less, and, and systems thinking is more, is more than that. But anyway, it's significant inroads into the public sector. In the private sector, it's arguable, I suppose, and is argued that the Toyota production system is the, is the biggest example of systems thinking in practice. Certainly was systemic, as, uh, as argued for by Deming and Taichi Ono. And most private business firms work with, um, with Lean and with Six Sigma and with aspects that have come from the Toyota uh, production system. Perhaps lose sight of the systemic aspects that were there originally. Uh, but it, it's no, nevertheless, those ideas are key in the, in the private sector as well. Uh, in government, uh, there's this thing called the the big society that um, if you're seeking money to work for the public sector, you, you have to pay homage to. And of course, it's not beyond me to make links between systems thinking and complexity theory and the big society when pushed. Uh, and there is some considerable interest in some of the think tanks and ResPublica, the, um, uh, the chief economist in ResPublica, uh, is, um, is, is into systems and complexity theory. And of course, there's all this sort of... Um, ecological and environmental concerns which lend themselves to systems thinking. Um, and so, uh, generally, uh, in, in my experience, in my career, I've never, I've never seen such an interest in, in systems thinking before. Uh, and uh, I, I think that we'll be able to demonstrate how it's worth in all these areas in a way that perhaps we've not managed to before, because the, the opportunity is there. People are looking for something different by way of management. And, and the opportunity is there, as I hope I can show to you. Um, let me just say what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about the, the nature of complexity. I'm going to give you my version of the development of applied systems thinking, which, as Mike says, is a version of this system of systems methodologies. And I'm going to give you two examples of critical systems thinking or creative holism. Uh, in action. Uh, one is with some work I've been doing with the International Centre for Complex Project Management, which is to rethink project management methodology using systems and complexity <coughs> ideas uh, and the impact that's having on the discipline of project management. And the second is a, is a critical systems analysis of the use of lean systems in the housing sector in, in the UK, which helps me to illustrate some of the points I've made in other parts of the presentation. Uh, and finally talk about what can creative holism contribute in realising, in realising the potential of systems thinking. 
So if, if you examine the, the text on complexity theory, this is the kind of things that they, they say about complexity. Uh, and you'll be, familiar, you'll be familiar with them. And it's not difficult to explain and describe these days. We've all been through quite a significant economic crisis where you get subprime lending in the United States. There's problems in the banking system. Lehman Brothers goes bust. Um, Iceland goes to the verge of bankruptcy, as does Ireland. Uh, in the UK, the Labour government, first time since the 1950s, thinks about nationalising the banks and effectively does so by taking significant public ownership share in some of the major bankers, in some of the major banks. Um, and uh, and the, the implications of this continue to, 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 go, to go out in, into developing countries. How are they going to be impacted? And of course, uh, in the UK, with a really significant cuts in, in public sector spending, which are impacting uh, throughout now. The, the news today, there was the, the, the cuts in, police, in policing, 28,000 staff cuts. You all know that um, uh, you're, in a, you're in STEM subjects, so you're, you're happy and sitting, sitting happily. But in the, the arts and social sciences, in most universities, the, the, cut on, uh, the cut in funding is about 80%. percent really significant public sector cuts, and it all comes down from that particular crisis. So all sorts of reverberations around that system, having all kinds of unpredictable uh, consequences as the system works its way, as the system works its way through, and its behaviour reveals itself. So this is all about um, many parts in the system, the interconnectivity of those parts, uh, multiple causality, just one factor, <coughs> not the cause A having an effect B, but multiple causes impacting what the behaviour of the system. Nonlinear relationships, a sort of butterfly effect in complexity theory, where the, the butterfly flapping its wings in the Amazon can lead to a significant storm in the southern United States, whatever. The fractal recursive nature of systems in systems engineering, referred to in systems of systems of of systems. Um, emergent properties that you couldn't have predicted from uh, the parts uh, of the system itself, they seem to emerge from the interconnectivity within the system and the increasing turbulence of systems environments and, and the relationship between systems and environments is getting more, more complex to understand as they co-evolve together. Uh, and all those attributes of complexity um, I, I refer to as deriving from the system itself. So they are aspects of systemic, systemicity which derive complexity, which derive from the complexity of the system itself. And on the other hand, there's, um, uh, there's a set of aspects of complexity which derive from uh, the people concerned with the system. Um, multiple purposes, if you have different stakeholders and different interest groups concerned with the system. They'll have different worldviews, different appreciations of the, the system that they're working in. Um, they will view the objectives they want to achieve through the system differently. That can lead to conflict and it can lead to some groups exercising whatever power is at their disposal to get their way in the system. And these aspects of complexity uh, derive from more subjective elements. They derive from the points of view and the appreciations and the perceptions of the stakeholders, uh, the stakeholders in the system. And if you read all the books on complexity theory, you'll find an enumeration uh, of these different elements. Probably a concentration on the first uh, set, the first seven set of, of aspects of complexity derived from the system itself, rather than the latter three, but increasingly uh, on the latter three as well. And people argue about complexity deriving from the greater size and connectivity that exists in systems, multiple causality, nonlinear relations, etc., and also from pluralism, for, from people having different perspectives and world, and world views. And um, Mike said that I can sometimes can be robust, so I'd like to give you an example of this. Um, I don't see much else worthwhile in complexity theory beyond what I've just said. Uh, it's well capable of enumerating uh, what the complex world is like what the world we live with these days is, is like, not as it was many years ago. It's more like this, and these terms describe it. 
Um, and there are some interesting new concepts here which are of value in describing the complexity of the, the world that we seek to live in and seek to manage. Uh, but complexity theory more or less stops at that point uh, and it doesn't tell you how to manage the different aspects of complexity in any way that I can see uh, is being useful to managers. And remember that my background uh, is, a, is a management background. So I know that there are all, sort of, um, all sorts of uh, vague notions about how to be a leader of complex adaptive systems which relate somehow to intuitively understanding the, the motion that the system and the range of factors that the system is uh, is stuck in and might potentially be uh, moved, moved out of. But this is extremely uh, sort of vague stuff. Uh, and in no way, in, in, in no way, in my view, is as useful to uh, managers, or not yet been made as useful to managers, as the different methodologies uh, dealing with different aspects of complexity that systems thinking has been developing uh, since the 1940s and the 1950s.